So today's review is going to be on the Falco brand inside the waist um, hybrid holster. Um, if you know anything about handguns, you know how difficult it can be to find quality concealment holsters for uh, specific firearms such as this that have features that may be considered a little bit um, out of the ordinary, um, especially if you have accessories like red dots, flashlights, lasers, or just a gun like this with a longer than usual slide. It can, in fact, be very difficult to find inside the waist and or concealment holsters for this type of gun that fits the gun specifically and meets the parameters of a quality holster. Having said that, uh, Falco Holsters reached out to me and asked me to review one of their products and sent me a, um, and thanks to them for sponsoring this video with a free sample of said product. So here we are. Having said that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, it'll come in a box just like this. And when you open it, We'll have a decorative branded bag sealed with a zipper. And of course, you'll have their little bio, which I will read for you now. Since 1989, we at Falco have been offering extensive range of gun holsters, hunting and tactical equipment for self-defense and duty use. Craftsmanship and pertinent innovations are our best feature. We make our holsters from the finest materials and latest designs to ensure the perfect fit so your gun is safe and in the right position when needed. Visit www.falcoholsters.com to learn more and read, um, uh, read our blog to get more information about gun carry solutions and practices. Thank you for your purchase. Please read the following instructions that are meant to help you achieve long life cycle for your Falco holsters. Now we'll skip the nylon holster part since this is a hybrid holster, so I'll move on to the leather holster. Dry clean only. New holsters need to be worn for a short period of time to soften and adapt to the gun and get to the perfect fit. Um, regularly uh, impregnate the leather use uh, set for impregnate uh, use set for impregnation from www.falcoholsters.com. I'm assuming with, there is a kind of a language barrier here because I think they're um, outside of the U.S. But what that means is they have leather treatments um, available on their website. So caution, Falco holsters are made to <clears throat> measure for a specific gun and may be used or may be only used for that particular gun model um, specified on the package. Do not adjust or modify this holster. Um, it's the user's responsibility to make sure that the gun sits in the uh, holster properly to use a um, suitable and recommended holster for the specific gun and to check, regular, uh, uh, check regularly for possible damage to the holster, which can affect safety. So now that that nice lengthy bio is out of the way, here's a couple of the things they make. They do, in fact, make all leather and kydex holsters. They obviously make nylon holsters because I suppose everybody does. Um, other tactical equipment and hunting supplies. Having said that, let's get to the bread and butter of this and actually look at the holster. So, this is something um, very similarly to what you would see from, uh, uh, like, Galco holsters, crossbreed holsters, alien gear, and otherwise. Um, it's a half leather and half kydex shell hybrid holster that's meant to be comfortable, concealable, and, and uh, durable. So... Having said that, this is for my Glock Model 41 with the TLR7A flashlight attachment. Um, so let's go ahead and test three basic necessity about necessities of a holster, which are, of course, to cover the trigger guard in a tamper-proof fashion, um, to hold the firearm securely, and to provide safe and reliable access at all times with the firearm. So let's check it out. That's how it sits in the holster. Nearest I can tell, the Kydex does actually rise to the um, all the way to the leading edge of the trigger guard where it attaches to the grip. Although it does leave a little bit of rearward trigger guard exposure on the body side of this holster. In the interest of full disclosure, because of what the package said and what it recommended, I have been wearing this for about a day and a half um, for break-in purposes to give it more of a fair review. So having said that, does it cover the trigger guard in a tamper-proof fashion? Well, let's check it out. All right, so unloaded gun simulating a chambered round. So can I slip a pinky in here and pull the trigger? No. Can I slip a pinky in here and pull the trigger? Yes. Um, having said that, this part would be actually pressed up against your body. It would actually make that extraordinarily difficult to pull that off. So having said that, we'll give that a little bit more of a fair test. And we'll pinch this as if it were actually up against one's body. We'll go ahead and do that. So now can I slip a finger in and pull the trigger? Well, if I try hard enough, yes, I can. 
Um, however, on the actual exposed side of the holster that would be facing away from your body, I'm not all too worried about it. I can't actually get my pinky in there past the fingernail. So, um, having said that, does it cover the trigger guard in a tamper-proof fashion? <laughs> I'm going to give it a pass, considering it's a hybrid holster. That's about the best I can really expect for that. Um, does it hold the firearm securely? Well, if I put a very light amount of pressure against the um, backing of the holster to simulate it being worn, yes, it actually does. Even if I hold it by the leather without doing that, it does, in fact, hold the firearm securely. And does it provide safe and reliable access? Well, I just go by the cut of the holster. It's a combat cut holster. It sits above the belt line. I can actually get a full firing grip on this while wearing it. So, yes, I can uh, have safe and reliable access to this firearm. As far as draw strokes, we'll show you a couple of dry fire draw strokes in a minute, along with some range time. Um, this is a vertical holster. There's no real cant to it at all. Um, I'm sure they would do that for you if you specified, but I didn't. I just uh, told them how I usually wear my gun and what sorts of things I prefer and allowed them their own discretion to the rest. So, um, having said that, let's go ahead and put this on and see how it functions. So, along with the three aspects that make an acceptable holster, I consider there to be three aspects that make an acceptable holster into a great holster. Those three aspects are as follows. The versatility of the holster, the comfort of the holster relative to the person wearing it, um, and the uh, overall design relative to its intended task. So, having said that, let's go ahead and put this on and uh, give, it a, give it a few draw strokes here. So, this does come with the steel belt clips that fit all the way up to, I believe, a two-inch belt, which is actually kind of nice. makes this a little easier to get on. Um, so, having said that, this is typically, typically how I get it on. Um, they did leave the leading edge of this clip um, exposed on the top half of the leather of this, so it can kind of snag your belt a little bit. You just want to be aware of that. Um, because the hardware does show through on the back side of this holster, I recommend wearing a tucked in undershirt like I'm doing now. I'll show you the overshirt here in a second. So, shirt's nice and neatly tucked in. I'm going to stick my finger underneath the clip to force it open and lift it over the top of my belt. I'm going to repeat that on the front clip. So, is that easy to get on? Depends on your perspective. I'm pretty used to the hybrid holster, so it doesn't really bother me that much, but would a single clip inside the waist appendix holster be easier? Well, duh. But if I wanted one of those, I would have ordered one of those. This is what I wanted. So, having said that, go ahead and make sure this gun holsters easily, which it does. You can actually feel it click in, which is really nice. Um, I wear this at about three and a half to four o'clock. Three thirty to four o'clock, excuse my redneck. Overshirt. Typically for the larger handguns, I'll try to wear plaid as often as I can. It hides the shapes and sizes of the different protrusions of the handgun when I wear it strong side. Concealment or uh, inside the waist appendix lends itself a little bit better to concealment. That's just not something I'm really comfortable with. I'm, I've never really favored that methodology of carrying. So um, inside the waist or outside the waist strong side is my go-to. So either what I'm wearing now or something like that, which uh, watch the Sake Holsters review video for this. So, having said that, is it relatively concealed? Sure. I don't know that this pokes out too drastically far, although you have to bear in mind it is a pretty large handgun. So as far as comfort, like I told you, I've been wearing this a couple of days, um, or about a day and a half. I am very satisfied with this level of comfort. I haven't noticed any pinching, jabbing, stabbing, twisting, um, uh, clothing manipulation, independent movement, um, or any... I can't feel any of the hardware or anything like that. So as far as the level of comfort, I'm really satisfied with that. As to its um, use, and intended, uh, use of intended task, uh, it is an inside the waist holster and generally inside the waist holsters lend themselves better to being, uh, to being utilized with smaller handguns. Uh, however, uh, having said that, I did mention earlier I ordered this because nobody else made one for this handgun that I'm carrying um, with the features that are currently so I did, in fact, go out on my own to purposefully procure this. So I'm not going to hold them against that for making a inside the waist holster for a larger handgun because that's exactly what I asked for. Um, as far as how well it works, I think it works pretty great. So we'll do a couple of dry fire draw strokes. So um, having said that, my usual method of this would be to rake um, underneath the uh, edge of my shirt um, uh, to expose the handgun as high as I can. I retain the shirt and then use the Y arm to 
access the handgun. Um, having said that, I don't really do that with this one because uh, the first couple of times I tried, I caught my uh, index fingernail right on the bottom edge of this metal clip right here, which hurts. <laughs> so generally, generally with this holster, I use the reach over method being the left arm to expose the handgun. So having said that, we'll go ahead and do a couple of draw strokes and reholstering. So you'll see how easy it is to draw and how easy it is to reholster and you can judge for yourself. So having said that, let's go ahead and get started. Caught my shirt on the way back. Follow safely, carefully. Follow safely. I'll go ahead and move that back a little bit. I'm not uh, used to it being right there at 3 o'clock. Just head 2 30. A little slower, but a little more comfortable on that one. There it is. Overall performance of the intended test of this holster, pretty darn good. As far as it being versatile, um, I was more referring to uh, being compatible with the everyday motions and tasks that you yourself perform. Um, I do a lot of kneeling and, and uh, bending over and sitting and standing and so forth and driving and whatnot. Um, this has not bothered me uh, or been in the way or provided accidental exposures or anything like that with any of those aforementioned uh, tasks. So. Having said that, does it provide the uh, three aspects of an acceptable holster? I'll give it a pass. Does it provide the three aspects of um, an excellent holster? Actually, yes, it does. Um, and I am actually overall very satisfied with this. Having said that, we'll go ahead and get to the range and we'll do some live fire for you and see how we do. So the range review day has finally come uh, for the particular portion of this video. Uh, when Falco reached out to me to review their product, they asked me to do so um, on a live fire range as well, so we're going to do that today. Having said that, we're going to go ahead and answer some fundamental questions regarding really hybrid holsters in general um, and some inherent issues they usually have, and we'll see if the Falco uh, follows suit with that or if they have actually cured those issues. Uh, the first issue being um, that because of the proximity of the sweat guard to your body and the material that this is made out of, um, a lot of times people will say, and I have experienced this before, particularly with the crossbreed type holsters, is your body can push up against this and make it difficult to get your high thumb full firing grip on the gun, as opposed to being able to push down between the holster and the gun for a clean draw stroke. The other thing people typically would complain about is friction. Now, friction with inside the waist holsters is going to inherently be higher for obvious reasons. But the complaint with the hybrid holsters having such a flexible backing, um, they say that the tension from your belt holding it up against your body can exacerbate that effect and drag along the slide of your gun all the way out during your draw stroke. And they say this can cost you time, uh, uh, clean grip, accuracy, and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and test that. So how do we do an objective test with the Falco holster um, in terms of uh, making things fair and, and measuring one time to another and, and uh, getting as many equivalencies as we can. How do we go about doing that? Well, here's what I came up with. We're going to stack this up up against my sake holster. Now, my sake holster was made custom to me to fit me, um, so it fits me particularly well. The important part to me is they both have the same ride height, for one, and for two, uh, they um, when I wear these, they're on the same position, about 3.30, on my waistline. So um, we know for a fact that this is a higher performance holster really than most anything you can get. So I figured we'd stack these two up against each other. And if this holster um, is worth what they're asking for it for, for a price point, it should be able to um, match with this just fine. So having said that, here's how we're going to do it. We'll go ahead and go to the range. I'll set up two targets 10 yards in front of me and I will position the camera behind me so that you can view my draw stroke from behind as I perform it. Um, we'll go ahead and do a few repetitions of different um, live fire simulations and things like that, um, and we'll go back and forth with these holsters. Uh, we'll do so in a concealed and unconcealed fashion. Um, for concealment with these holsters, just so nobody throws out the unknown variables and things like that, um, the general consensus online across all the forums you can really look at state that with outside the waist concealment, for best results, you should wear 
a one size larger overcoat or outer shirt with a button up um, hem so that you can sweep the coat or garment open in order to expose the holster. So I will go ahead and dress just as you see me now for the outside the waist holster. For the hybrid holsters, the general consensus is as follows. You should have an, a tucked in undershirt, just like you saw in the, in the dry fire portion of this video. Um, and you should have a closed one size over shirt. The idea being uh, there is enough clearance uh, with your oversized shirt to prevent printing of the handgun during concealed carry and things like that. Um, but also to provide enough wiggle room to where you don't hit any snags when you attempt to clear the shirt from the holster. So having said that, um, that's how we're going to do it. We're also going to do some unconcealed draw strokes um, where you'll see me just probably with this black t-shirt on tucked in, uh, basically open carry strokes. So um, having said that, we'll go ahead and answer those fundamental questions for you. We'll stack up uh, the uh, we'll stack up the hybrid Falco holster with the Sake Kydex outside the waist, and we're going to see how we do. Seem to have suffered a casualty. So we're back from the range. What did we learn? Well, let's start from the beginning. Does this meet the parameters of an acceptable holster? Marginally, but yes. Um, again, marginally, uh, I gave it an exception because of its inherent design. Um, does it meet the parameters of an excellent holster? Yes, it does. And how did we fare on the range? Well, the initial complaints being that you couldn't get a full firing grip um, upon you know, retention of your firearm with your hand, that turned out not to be too big of a deal. Um, 
I, I did feel the effect that most people complain about the hybrid holsters. It did not inhibit my ability to utilize the handgun in any way. Um, did any unnecessary friction slow down my draw stroke? Subjectively speaking, I don't think so, but you guys as the viewers may judge for yourselves. Um, having said that, what do I think of the overall quality of this holster? Well, um, I've been wearing this for about a week and a half now before shooting this uh, uh, final uh, portion of the range review of this video. Um, I think it's very comfortable. Um, I think it's great utility. I think it's very versatile. It's obviously a pretty high quality. Uh, it makes it so I can conceal this larger handgun. And really, overall, I give this quite a hefty thumbs up. Uh, simply speaking, it does everything I would ever ask out of any holster and more. And on top of all of that, it does what most hybrid holsters do not and holds the firearm securely even when accepting a light. So, having said that, please give Falco Holsters your next purchase. Um, I found this to be a very wonderful product. I'll be reaching out to them in the future to see if they have anything else they would like me to test and review. And uh, having said that, guys, thanks for watching.